Hey everyone, welcome back to part 4 of our build of Trumpeter's 135th Striker in the style of Drebin Striker from Metal Gear Solid 4. Hello, right, we're back. Okay, now, you may notice by looking at this that I've kind of jumped ahead quite a bit. Um, I thought about it for a while and so many of these pieces are small and fiddly that it just wouldn't be filmable for me to do it. So I've jumped quite far ahead. I've applied most of the parts to the, uh, to the upper hull. Uh, if you remember last time we finished the lower hull finish it but we we got quite far got all the brass parts on so I've actually gone ahead and put most of the stuff on top of the upper hull um, now because I'm building Drebin striker and not just a standard striker um, Drebin striker itself doesn't have a lot of the stuff that a normal military striker would have um, here are some pictures to suggest uh, to show you what I mean Right, now as you can see from those photographs, there's a lot of surface detail on the real thing that just isn't on Drebin Striker, it's quite a smooth vehicle. So, um, for example, his doesn't have the crane arm, um, it doesn't have a lot of the grills and bars around the side. So, <clears throat> we're not going to be putting those on. Um, what I have done, there are a few parts where um, bits that would go on would get in the way of the pretend, of the decals that I plan to put on it and I've had a few mishaps with this I shall get a little pointy stick now Ted this doesn't compare in any way shape or form to your pointy stick but I know I can't beat the one with lights so I'm not even going to try um, ok so I'll just get this hair off there because that's pretty gross so had a few mishaps um, this part here which you can see. Um, I basically went ahead and built these and put some pieces on and realised they'd get in the way of the decals. This part here is like some kind of capstan, possibly, some kind of winch device. I built it all, put it on, then realised there isn't actually one on Drebin, so I took it off again. It left this small triangular plate underneath here, which you can see. Um, it was a bit rough and ready. I sanded it, and I put a layer of super glue on there, and flattened it down but it still looked pretty crappy so instead of just cut and shaped a piece of plastic card to go over so it looks like a functional plate even though it shouldn't really be there um, these parts here were two little or little holes for bits that glued on a cross brace here like this one that goes down here I'm just going to check my focus for it uh, a continuation of that cross brace there uh, and a, a, do, a bit here that sticks out um, which I put on and both of these and then realised they shouldn't be there and they're getting away the decals so I took those off and sanded them down I debated whether to fill the holes as you can see I've, I've filled a hole here at the back but because of the rivets I didn't want to destroy the rivets too much uh, and the edge of this door and the hinge so what I did instead was plump to just cover those with a sheet of a piece of plastic card now it looks a bit weird but I'm hoping once it's painted it'll just look like a piece of panelling that's been put on uh, for some unknown reason by Drebin so hopefully we'll get away with that um, but yeah they kind of went a bit wrong so oops the piece here at the back there's supposed to be a big rack with um, a spade and shovel and other equipment digging equipment on there but that's not on Drebin's there's a decal here so because it was quite a big hole I've, I've actually taped along the back 
and then filled this with some Tamiya filler, some Tamiya white filler, and sanded that down so it's gone in. Uh, and on the other side, I just had one little tiny hole uh, where a piece of ribbing goes um, that I can't have on there because the decals go. The decal will basically go here. So I've, I've simply covered that with some plastic card. Again, I'm hoping it kind of looks just like a a bit of panelling rather than anything too weird. Um, put on the grenade launchers, I think that's what they are, I did a little bit of photo etch, uh, I ran out of uh, Tamiya super glue, so from the lovely guys at eModels, I got some of the um, logic glues, I got, I'll show you, uh, well, we've got thin, medium and thick, um, and I've used these a little bit now for the cyanoacrylate parts, I've, for the brass parts I've put on. I have to say, guys, these are really good. Um, they've got a nice open nozzle at the top, so they don't go everywhere, and you don't need a lot. So it's good for dispensing out a small amount of glue uh, onto your cocktail stick or pin. Um, actually, real props to these guys. I ordered them at like half two or three on, I think, Thursday. And those glues turned up at on Friday morning. So thank you very much, guys, at your models. You guys all rock. Um, and yes, brilliant. So last minute catch there. I also got myself some glue debonder as well, uh, just in case anything goes wrong. Um, as I was saying, these are really small fiddly parts. The grenade launchers, there's like a million, well, there's not really a million. There's a whole mess of photo etch parts. I'll see if I can show you. Whole mess of photo etch parts upon which the launchers sit. Um, this piece here was one, and then the little the little sort of triangles were separate pieces. It was super fiddly to do, and I made it got a bit messy, but I got away with it. Um, and that wouldn't have filmed at all, so this is why I've jumped ahead. Uh, what else have I added? I've done started the uh, gun emplacement ring there. I've added this little hook here. If you can see it. Um, I put it on and then realised again it's not on Drebin Striker, but I quite like it, so there you go. I, the, you do get an alternative photo etch part for this. I'll zoom in and have you have a look. You do get an alternative photo etch part for this um, with a base and the, the sticky up stand. And again, I apologise for my not knowing any terminology for armoured vehicles, so I'm a bit rubbish. Uh, but I made the base, but I could not figure out how to get the stand this rod to attach to the base now the instructions show you have to bend it a certain way and stick it in but although I'm enjoying this kit I have to say there are some parts in the instructions where it's not very clear what you're supposed to do they don't quite explain things fully so there are a few bits where you're flying blind so just be take your time with this model. I don't know if it's typical of trumpeter kits but take your time um, there are some vague bits in the instructions that I've had to think about for five minutes before I've done them. So, yeah, especially with photo etch, it just says here's a piece, bend it, stick it on. Okay, but exactly how does it attach? So, what we'll do today, it won't be a long show today. Uh, I'm just going to put on the bits of that. I've made some sub assemblies, so we'll put on all the rest of the stuff that goes on top here. Um, if I get chance, if I get time, I'll stick on the stick the two halves of the hull together as well. So let's crack on. I ran out of my Tamiya, my um, Humbrol cement. So today I'm using Tamiya cement, not the thin cement. The guys at eModel will say that should be in very shortly. But normal standard Tamiya cement now is very thick. So I've had to kind of teach myself how to use their cement. So what do we have? I made some sub assemblies. We have the two bits of racking for the rear sides. Uh, stowage areas, we've got some plating, top plate, um, we have the thing that goes on the front which I think is part of the winch system, let's see if I can get a picture of that for it, oh iOS 8, why won't you focus anymore, so I think it's part of the winch system, it goes on the nose basically, again it's super tiny and it was super fiddly to make, we have the capstan, For the winching system or for the crane system. Come on, iOS 8. God damn you, Steve Jobs. Oh, wait, you weren't around for this one. 
like it's not going to play ball. It's quite neat. There you go. Little capstan system. And the shame of that is um, it disappears under some cowling, so you probably won't see that anyway when it's built. Uh, and we have a bit of plating here that will go on the side, a bit more photo etch on there. And the driver's hatch. Now I've made the driver's hatch closed. Um, on Drebin Striker, you never see the hatch open. So I've made it closed. Now there is a piece that goes on top here. Let me get my pointy stick. Bit that goes on top here and covers these viewports. But I've got a plan for these viewports. Um, either to paint them or to use another funky method that I'm thinking of. Um, so I'm not going to put that on yet. I'll put that on once I've painted those because little viewing ports are a bit of a nightmare to paint. And some little bits of stick on stuff. Right, so let's get this done. So it's not going to be a long show, so we'll just crack on. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So what we will do is get our instructions. I'm going to be jumping and hopping around here a bit because I've kind of jumped all over the place. Uh, right, so where are we up to? So do, 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 do. first thing we need to do is figure out where the heck we're up to and which bits I've missed out. Um, done all of those, done all of those. You can see, by the way, you might find this handy, especially with these instructions because they are quite confusing sometimes. Um, I've just been ticking off bits as I've done them, sub-assemblies and so on. You can see on the instructions I've been marking them off as done. I actually find that quite handy when you're building a, either a complex kit with a million pages of instructions like Fine Mold's Millennium Falcon or just anything where there's lots of little sub-assemblies, just so you know which bits you've done. Uh, okay, I need to stuck that bit on there, done all this, done the side panels, made this back plate. So this back plate needs to go on. The back, strange enough, put these stowage crates on. I'm not putting the grenade launchers, you can see, I'm not putting these grenade launchers on because they're not on Drebbins, so I don't need to attach that plate. I've not attached this little arm. Let's do this bit first then. So, should be fairly straightforward. This basically just needs to go on there like this. Done, there you go, right, we'll see you next time. No, joking, sorry. Oh, you'll notice as well, by the way, I've not built all the aerial antennas because I'm not using them all. Again, Drebbins doesn't have any. I put one and then realised what it was, so we'll have one. Um, so that needs to go on there thusly. So we should do that first. Uh, I've no idea how good the lighting is today, folks. It's getting wintry now and the lighting's not brilliant in here, so... Uh, yeah... Right, let's get my glue brush, because that's not my glue brush. So this just slides on. There's two little tabs, two little holes. It just slides on there. Now it is strange with this kit, there's, there's a lot of bits where there's no actual lugs and holes, it just seems to be best fit type scenario, so I've had some fun with this. Oops. Now, as I said before, I'm using the Tamiya. So let's do it this way. I'm using the Tamiya cement, the standard cement. Now it's really thick. And because it's really thick, it takes a while to dry. I'm going to use the glue, the bottle brush for this. It takes a while to dry, which means you've got a lot of work time. However, it also means it's very easy to put on too much cement. And it's not perfect for filling in, for putting feeding through little gaps, so. Slot that in. Get that down first. So I've had to kind of re-educate myself because where it was with the Humbrol glue, you can just go ahead and feed it into little gaps. With this glue, it's um because it's thick, you have to really not load much on the brush at all. Now my typical traditional method is just to stick the brush in the pot and uh, load it with this one because it's so thick if you do that you tend to get glue running all the way down the brush for ages and even if you get most of the glue off the brush it'll still end up blobbing everywhere so I've had to kind of re-educate myself into gently putting the brush into the pot I need to feed this through what I will do is when the guys e-models get the uh, to me a thin 
I'll be jumping all over that. I see that it's really loaded now, that brush. I'll be jumping all over jumping over that like a rash. It's still overloaded. You just kinda have to push the brush part in and not the rest of your brush. So you have to take your time with this. It's great, it's great glue. I mean it it's got a long work time which makes it brilliant. If you're gluing large flat areas. Hope you can see all this. If you're doing large flat areas, it's great. You just have to be careful with it. Oops. So for this kind of work, I prefer a thinner glue. But I ran out. I haven't had a chance to go and get some. Because I are idiots. Okay. Well, I think that is sticking now. That is looking pretty good. Excellent. So yeah, if you're using Tamiya cement, standard Tamiya cement, just dip the tip of your brush in the glue. Don't dip the whole brush in. Because you don't want to make a mess. Righty, that's that bit. Where's my wiping cloth? Okay. What's next? Next. We have uh, the side pieces here. Yeah. You see that? The little stowage racks. Fairly straightforward. Just so you can see, by the way, uh, when I was saying about bits are glued on, and if you can, if it'll focus on this, let's have a look. This bit here was a bit I glued on, and this crossbar here. So I had to sharpishly remove those. And that was the little capstan piece that I glued on. That I then realised was a complete mistake. I actually, when I made that, I put the wrong piece in there anyway, so I made a right mess of it. So I was having one of those days where I, one couldn't tell the el one's elbow from one's rear end. Right. So next bit is the sides. Now these are actually different. I don't know if you can see. You have two holes in the middle with nothing obstructing them, and two holes with this rack obstructing it. This one goes on that side. So these are quite fiddly to make as well. Again, it's um, like with most models, you'll have a lug and a hole. With these, it's it's kind of the back plate, the bottom plate, and the front plate, and you have to kind of just place them together and hope they stay together. Uh, I hope it all works out. So let's get these glued on. So they should just fit in like that. Bit simple. So I shall apply the glue to this side. Because it's a big area, I can afford to use the the bottle brush rather than my little paint brush. Because it's quite viscous, quite thick, so it'll take approximately all the time to glue it with my brush. This on. Oh, and let's take it off again. Give it a second. I'll feed some glue in in a moment. I just wanted to get it in there initially. Now we'll use my little brush just to dab the glue in there. It's quite a big splob, even with a tiny touch of glue on the brush, it's quite a big splob of glue, so. You have to be quite wary when you're using this stuff. Very good glue though. Really good glue. When it sticks, it certainly sticks. So I'm just going to feed some glue underneath. Because it's thicker, it's not brilliant at scrooging into little cracks and grooves, but it does. It's just not as not as good as thinner glues. Yes, it won't be a very exciting episode today. We're just literally sticking things on. Once these parts are on, 
There's a lot of the build actually done then. And what I'm probably going to do is once the build is done, get the painting done, the basic painting, um, and then I have to send off my decal designs to the chap that's going to make the decals for me. And that'll take a few weeks, so while we're waiting for decals to come back, uh, what I will do is sort the diorama out. Now I've been thinking about the diorama for this, and I've not really decided yet. I could do an outdoor scene, and as a lot of MGS4, Metal Gear Solid 4 takes place in the sort of Middle East, I could do a sort of deserty scene, and that's not too hard, but I've been thinking I kind of want to do, uh, if you've played Metal Gear Solid 4 you'll know, apologies if you've never even heard of it, go and read, look it up, it's a, it's basic, I've, I've never actually explained it, have I really? It's um PlayStation game, it's a series of games on PlayStation consoles, epic, epic legendary games. Um, I can't even begin to explain the storyline so I'm not going to try because if you go to Wikipedia and just read up a Metal Gear Solid you your brain will actually melt it's that complex a convoluted storyline takes place over like well 50 60 years from the cold war it's all sort of um it's, I, I can't explain it i really can't explain it trust me it's, it's just impossible to explain i know it sounds really weird saying that but it really is you can't if you don't know what metal solid gear metal gear solid is and you're just going to have to go and read up about it. But good luck with that because it's not that easy. But anyway. I've actually forgotten what I was about to say. So brilliant. Well done. Um, it's a very beloved. Game franchise. So anyway yes. Right back on track. Brain. My brain is braining again now. Um, when you first meet Drebin. It's in a sort of a building, in a bombed out building. Well, in a building. Um, and it basically looks like a parking garage and he's parked there. And the first thing you see is Drebin Striker sat there with a Persian rug on the floor and a rifle, an assault rifle on the rug. And then Drebin is revealed. So what I was thinking was maybe um, building that little scene, a couple of walls, lots of paint chipping and weathering on the walls. Uh, I'll try and find, if I can, a 135th scale Persian rug somewhere. I haven't got a printer so I can't print one out. Uh, and a 135th scale weapon. I'm not sure if the weapon in question actually exists in real life, so it does, I'll get one. If not, I'll just have to make a look alike. Okay, so that's that on. Uh, oh, yes, I forgot to tell you, I meant to tell you. These stowage racks at the side, I don't know if you can see, there's like little divider bars. Two thin ones and one fat one. On this side, I have, they're really fiddly to get in, and they're really fiddly to sand. On this side, I have both of them and the fat one. On this side, I have the fat one, because these are the two both of them pinged off in the tweezers and just disappeared forever so not a lot I can do about that um, oh I have a new purchase well I meant to show you I have a new purchase if you haven't got a pair of these get a pair of these or any kind of similar um, now I will confess sorry guys I didn't get these from the guys at your models I actually got them from my local hobby my local model shop as I was passing by I suddenly remembered I needed some they're basically reverse tweezers you push them to open them so they always have a grip on whatever you're holding so if you're holding something really tiny well not that but if you were holding something really tiny it's got a permanent grip now it come, they come in absolutely brilliantly for sanding small tiny pieces you know like you've got a tiny little piece that you're trying to hold in your hand and sand and it pings off and it's good. Th these will actually hold them in place for you and then you can just sand away so for little things like grab rails and little tubes and things, absolutely brilliant. So if you haven't got a pair of these tweezers, 
It's only cost me about four quid. If you haven't got a pair of these tweezers, go and get some. I don't know how I've survived without them for so long. Uh, right, what's next? So, we have done that bit. We've done these bits. I've got the other side. I'll rip two. I have to, right, okay. Done these parts. I've basically got to stick the nose piece on. I've made the headlights as well, which I forgot to get out of that pile. Uh, put the nose piece on, headlights, uh, some racking at the back, which I think I forgot to take off the sprue, and this piece. Okay, so, get these done. Actually, I need to put this on as well, don't I? That needs to go on there. We forgot about that bit, so I shall do that bit now. Nice and simple. Move that out of the way of the glue. Because this is just a flat panel, I can be kind of careless with the glue. No, no need to be super careful with this one. Get this on. Done. I will say with this kit, it's um, besides some very strange methods of attaching things together in places, it does actually fit together really nice. I've not really had too many major issue, fit issues at all, um, which is nice. Okay, then we have the headlights. Headlight units are super fiddly to make. And the schnoz. Uh, okay, so we've got one of these is the left headlight, one is the right. Just to make sure I know which is which. Uh, that is the right headlight, even though it's left hand side. Okay. That one is that one, I think. Is that right? Yes. So it's the big light on the inside and the little lights on the outside. I think. Just checking the instructions. Yes. I'll put that there. I'll put that there so I don't forget. And the big schnoz piece just sticks on here. Thusly. I like that. It's like a nose. So it just goes on there. Do the honours. I figured I had to show you some building. Because the thing with model build videos is the actual building is never the exciting bit. Ooh. Because it really is just me sticking things together. To me the exciting bit is the painting and the weathering. The building is pretty much just a means to an end. So that's why I'm not going overboard on the actual build parts. Plus it's really difficult to film, especially on small models. It's really difficult to film the build because I've got to be conscious of where my hands are, what you can see. So... I'm really... That's too much glue. I mean, I know it's helpful, but because this is a quite straightforward kit, really, it's not like you can have lots of complicated things that I need to tell you about. So, the actual build part is not very exciting at all. I can't imagine. I mean, you might. It's brilliant. You might love it. I don't know. Let's add on. Nose attached. Right, I'm just going to pause the film for a second because I need to make sure I don't run out of memory. Um, so, back in a second. Sorry about that. Right, okay. I can never remember how much memory I've actually got on this, uh, so I need to make sure I don't run out halfway through and lose 20 minutes of graft. Okay, now we will attach the headlights, which should go on. There. Okay. Oh, hello. Falling, dropping. Let's go 
Turns on there like that. Okay, cool. Nope. Fingers and thumbs today, as always. Let's put some glue in the hole this time. I'm not going to put glue on the bottom as well. Oh, there it is. No, you couldn't see that, sorry. Let's get this on. Let's get it on, you. Okay, that's that on. Now, I don't know if you noticed there, but I haven't glued in, as with all good models, for headlights, you get a little clear piece that is affected with the headlight lens. Haven't glued that on yet, there's a very good reason for that. Um, I intend to paint the inside of the headlight silver, because that's kind of how headlights usually are, reflective inside. Make that shot straight. Uh, paint the inside of the headlight silver, and I'll get all the other painting and weathering done, and then I will glue the clear piece on last of all. And I'll be using, as always, clear canopy glue. So you don't get a glue mess. And so you can see through the lens. Oops, into the headlight. The idea of the silver is just to make it look like it's got the interior reflective surface, which headlights have. Okay, okay. So, so anyway, yes, yeah, so the diorama, I think I might, I'm debating whether to do the interior one, which will basically be the base, two walls, and the surface. Now, I have a question for my for the viewers. I've made dioramas before, but they've never actually had walls in them, interior walls. Now, I'm not really sure what to make the walls out of. They're concrete, so they don't look like a brick texture, so a pre-made wall with no use. Just imagine like a concrete car park wall, basically. Um, anybody got any suggestions as to what I can make the walls out of? They need to be thick enough so that I can put some holes in the base and holes in the walls and have them go in, have them go in like, so I can drill some holes in the bottom of the wall and have them attached to pegs so they stay in place. Um, so I've made a lot of dioramas. I've never actually done a splob of glue on there. There, I have to sand that down. Um, yeah, so anybody got any suggestions to what to make walls out of? They're going to be, they're like interior walls, so they will go up to the ceiling, they're not like garden walls. So I'm not really sure, so any advice would be uh, much appreciated. Okay, now we need to add the capstone. No, we don't. We need to add this piece. Move that right. This piece goes on here. Like that, we'll see. I like the photo etch in this can, it's really nice. Uh, so, we need to drop it first of all. Uh, which way? That way. Okay. So, yeah, any advice on what to make the walls out of? It's going to be a wooden base. I've not really planned it that much. But I'm not really sure, so. Have you got any advice as to what? If, you, if you're making like a building, what does one make the walls out of? Um, I know exactly how I'll paint it. I mean, that's where my normal focus lies, you see. So I know exactly how it will be painted, what it will look like. As to actually what to make it out of. Because I may actually obviously want to sell the diorama and model at some point. So I need to also make sure it's something that can either be taken apart for shipping or will survive a journey. I mean, it might, I might just keep it in my cabinet and not do anything with it. Not sell it at all. Who can say? Okay, that's that glued on. Wunderbar. Uh, the next piece is done the nose, done the lights, done the I've done C6. I haven't done C6. I left that bit. 
and all that. Do that bit off camera. Uh, the next bit we have is we've done that piece. I need to stick this on. I need to put the cap stand in, which is over the page, and I need to add. Well, let's just put this piece on base. This whole page, I need to add that one piece. Brilliant, because I'm not putting the uh, I'm not putting the crane on because that's not on Drebbins at all, either down or up. It's just not there. Actually, it doesn't actually have all these grenade launchers, but I kind of added them because they were kind of cool. So, so I need to add B19, which is here. Little tiny piece. B19, which goes like in there like that, I think. Just test fit. Okay. Again, a lot of these pieces are small and fiddly, so... Dot of the glue. Get that on there. Like that, you see. And now you see why a lot of this kit wouldn't have been worth filming. Not gonna stick. Wouldn't have been worth filming because all you would really see is my hand. Isn't that brilliant? There we go, that's that on. Uh, you're probably seeing in the in the picture uh, lots of shiny bits where the glue is. If you're making a model, if you're making this one or any model, don't worry too much if it's shiny. As long as it's not lumpy, that's like this lump I just put in my finger there, I'm gonna have to sand that down. As long as it's not lumpy, you should be fine when you start painting it to get rid of all of that. Um, if you're using something like the Tamiya Extra Thin, then you wouldn't have that, ideally, because it would go into all the little grooves. Okay, next. I've built the driver's hatch assembly. Ta -da. This is the piece I haven't put on. This piece here, B44. These little pieces are the little viewing lenses i want to be able to either paint them or something so i've not added that i'll paint that up that peaks up and then i'll when everything's finished and they're painted i'll stick that on it just slots on so so i have to add driver's hatch capstan uh these pieces i've done something special with them. i'm not putting c5 on like this side that will get in the way of the decal e6 and c7 i'm not putting this on because it's not on there so let's get these pieces done so, the capstan, now somebody tell me, I'm assuming this capstan is part of some big ass winch system, like the big crane that I'm not actually gluing on, so why I would actually have a capstan on a vehicle with no crane, I don't know, but hey, let's uh, get this glued in. Mm -hmm. This actually fits really snugly anyway, so you don't have to worry about not having enough glue. This will go in here. Like that. It did fit snugly when I dry fitted it anyway. Make sure it's parallel, because it fits at a funny angle. Glue. It's quite messy in there, but you're never going to see inside, so that's that on. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've enjoyed this kit so far. I lots of little tiny pieces, but hey, that's not a problem. Um, I've not had much flash or anything, it's really nice quality. And the fact you get photo etching there as well is brilliant. Right, driver's hatch. When you make this, um, if you can see, little angle, little hinge here. It's about one, two, three, four, five, six pieces make up that hinge. You've got two little arms here, the back plate this rod with the, those on and these side pieces 
And like I said about the instructions, it doesn't really explain anything. So it was only when I put it all together, I was like, oh, right, these go on there. And they are ah, OK, that makes sense. Quite neat, though, the way it does it. So theoretically, if you had a, if you wanted to, I'm sure there's third party kits out there. You could have the hatch as an openable hatch. Glue those two strips in. You could have that as an openable hinged hatch. I've not checked, but I'm sure somebody somewhere does a, uh, an aftermarket interior kit. I'm sure there will be. I'd be surprised if there wasn't one available. Okay, get these on. Put them in the hole. around the edge I can see the light fading outside god damn it it's winter winter sucks summer's much better summer's awesome get this on now I did it perfectly a minute ago and now I can't actually see what I'm doing and now I'm putting my finger in all the blue brilliant go on in you go there you go, that's it. Done. Done and done. Give that a second to settle. Perhaps if you get it straight, dear. Had it wonky in the big gap. Yeah, and I've never made a trumpet kit before, so. Given this kit, hmm, I might make more. Is it a Tamiya killer? I don't know. Somebody did ask me that at some point. Because I've made Tamiya kits for so long. I've always seen them as the, the be all and end all of military miniature kits. Is this a, a Tamiya killer? I don't know. I mean, the, the quality of it is as good as. No doubt there. In some ways, even slightly better, perhaps. But some of the ways things go together is a little strange. Not quite as intuitive as, say, to me, okay, but maybe that's not a bad thing. You know, you don't want everything to be dead easy. Otherwise, there's no fun and no challenge. Uh, what's next? Next we have some side pieces. Now I've made some adjustments here for my super decals. Two pieces. Uh, okay, I need to file that. Stupid boy. It's two pieces here, two little runners or support strips that are too long, they go where I want my decal to go. There will be a decal here. Um, so this beam here and this, there's a bar that goes under here and a bar that goes along here. They're too long. So I've had to take a bit of creative license. This strip was actually about this long. I've simply cut it and sanded it down to give it a, a nice curve. This will simply attach onto the little Little, you can't see any of that. Brilliant. This will simply attach onto these little nuts here. So this strip actually came to about here. I think. But I've simply cut it and trimmed it. Because I like the strip. I just didn't want it to go all the way where the decal is going to go. So Let's get this on. Now I'm going to... I have actually got a little tiny bit of my Humbro glue left. So I'm going to use that, I think. Because a really tiny bit. I need the thinness now. Let's just get that there. I really can't wait for remodels to get the Tamiya extra thin. I'm really, really looking forward to doing that, to using that. So let's see if we can get this in shot and so you can see what I'm doing. I know it's quite shadowy on here today as well, so apologies. Right, so the strip's on there. It just rests on these little bolts, so. I'm going to have to be quite creative here. So glue that end in. Get that on. And then 
and work my way along. <laughs> you don't want a lot of play. Sometimes with long strips like this it's best to start at one end and then move down. If you try gluing everything all at once sometimes it just gets messy and you just things can go wrong. But at least this way, if you do it this way, you've got purchase on at least one end to give you some grip. Okay, that's on. So I'm just going to run some glue underneath. I don't know if you can see this. Apologies if you can't. I can hear things scraping on my desk. That's never a good sign. This is the thing they glue it, will just go into the little grooves much better. But that's that one. And the next piece is this again, which was actually longer, and I've snipped it and trimmed it because it goes from here across there. But I just want it to go a little bit because I need, I need this panel line clear. So this one is a little fiddly to put on. Oh, sponge. Right. Get a glue on that. Get this one on like that. Yeah, this one's really fiddly to put on, but goes on first time. Brilliant. Every dry fit was a nightmare trying to get it on. But yeah, that bar actually originally you couldn't see any of that, could you? Originally came to about here. But I need this bit free, so. just to get in place. Again, I'm not too worried about the glue mess. It's visual, not physical. It's not like lumps, it's just shiny bits. They'll vanish when I paint it and prime it. Priming will cover a multitude of sins. <coughs> Excuse me. Then E13, which goes under here. I like that bit. E13 will just go under there and then not come out again. Brilliant. Get off. Uh, so, let me just get some glue going on. I'm drying already. Wow. that on. Uh, what have we got left? That is a piece. I think we're just about done now. Uh, just about done for today anyway. Let me have a look. C6. So that should go across here. C6 goes that way. Should just slot in here like that. Just double check. I'm just going to dry fit. Always dry fit your parts before you stick them in. Just to make sure more, or more than anything else that it's actually the right part. And that we've got everything lined up. Hmm. I'm going to have to 
adjust this piece, it doesn't seem to want to cooperate. And again, if you're using thin cement, then a lot of times when you dry fit it, you can actually cement it from there. You don't have to. Oh, that's all right. It's gone in. Like this one now, it's actually slotted in. Okay, so I can actually just cement it straight off. Uh, yeah, apologies if you keep not seeing stuff. It goes out of shot. The problem is it's not a big model like the Viper, so I can't use a far away camera angle. But then by using a close-up camera angle, it means I tend to go out of shot a lot. I can't see what's being filmed. So, I'm a model maker, Jim, not a cinematographer. Just head down. But I hope I'm entertaining you regardless. If I'm not, don't tell me, because I'll just hurt my feelings. Just tell me I'm brilliant. There you go, done. Is that in? Okay, that's that one on. Uh, and then we have L13, which are these little pieces. Now this might require some adjustment. These two holes here, if you can see them, they're moulded on the inside, but not on the outside. You have to cut them out yourself, which is interesting. Um, these are the rests for the big crane arm. If you have it down rather than up, it's where they, where the crane rests. That's what these are. Now again, Drebbins doesn't have a crane. But I thought these looked quite cool. Oh, should I use the tweezers first, shouldn't I? Those kind of cool looking greeblies. I like cool looking greeblies. So I'll get those on. Cool, that's them on. And that, I think, is as much as I've got down for today. Next up, what I need to do is make the cannon, the 50 cal gun. Um, that is going to be super fiddly, so I'm not going to film that because there are really tiny parts. I also need to glue the two halves of the, halves of the fuselage together, but I'll do that off camera. Um, it looks a bit tricky. I think that will do it for today. I say not not a long or very exciting episode, but sometimes it's just the grind. You know, you have to grind to level up. So uh, I'll just go and see what's involved in the hull, and then I'll I'll come back. I might, I might film this, but I'll see how long we've filmed so far. Uh, so stay tuned. Back in a moment. Okay, I've just had a look, and we've got about forty-five minutes already, so that'll do for that'll do for this time. Um, what I'm going to do for future episodes um, is going to change up a little bit. I've actually got a commission coming in, a commission build. It's going to take up a lot of my time, so I really am going to be stuck at weekends for this. It's the only time I'm really going to get to do these, uh, and with the painting coming up. The may I know it's been a bit a couple of weeks since my last one because I've been tied up with work, but uh, what I'm going to try and do is do as much as I can on a weekend. If it's enough to fill a whole video, I'll send it off to e models and get it posted. If it's only like 20 minutes, I'll probably then hold off to the next weekend, do some more, and then do that. So don't panic if there's if there's gaps between the next few videos, just because I'll have to build up enough to make an episode, and with only Saturday and a bit of Sunday to work on it, it's going to be a bit tricky. Uh, and it's painting and stuff coming up soon anyway, so uh, that'll be a case of paint it and leave it 24 hours to dry. So it may be that the next few episodes get a bit further apart, just to the practicalities of painting and other things. Um, but yep, yeah, I'll go off and do the 50 cal. I will glue the, fu the fuse large. I must stop saying fuse large. The hull together. Um, then from that point, I think we're on the painting. Uh, get all the painting done as best I can. I'll get the decals sorted out and get them sent off to be produced. 
Um, that'll take a few weeks, and then we'll crack on with the diorama once I pull my finger out and decide what exactly I'm going to do. Um, so, but that'll do it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, before I go any further, I'll just do a quick save just to save my progress. Probably a good idea. I've learned that in games. You need to do that. So let me just uh, save my progress. Oh, hey, Snake. Do you need to save? You know, I thought I might try helping you out with some more Chinese proverbs like I used to do in the old days. <sighs> really? Mei Ling had a natural flair for it. You... not so much. Don't worry, I've been reading up on them and I think I understand them much better. Like this one, for instance. The straight foot is not afraid of the crooked shoe. I think this means that if you have, uh, normal feet, then you can wear any shoe, but, um... If a man has crooked feet, then, uh... Otacon. Yes? Are you going to end this by saying something like, The octopus is the ninja of the sea? If so, I may have to kill you. Uh, octopus? What? Right, so that's saved. If I mess it up now, I can just go back to my last save. Brilliant. Okay, that's it for this time. As always, go along to emodels.co.uk. Jolly good chaps, best online model store you'll find. Uh, everything you can possibly need, they'll have. If they haven't got it, you don't need it. There'll be something better they have. Um, check out for a couple of new things. They, as I said in the earlier in the video, they will have the Tamiya Thin Cement coming out fairly soon uh, in the next few days. I think worth getting that. And also check out the front page. They've got the the massive, uh, I think it's one thirty fifth scale kit of the Dora railgun, the German World War Two basically massive cannon on a rail bogey it's huge somebody's told me it's supposed to be the biggest model kit in the world i'm not i don't know it might be it looks it but certainly check that out it's enormous it's it's an epic model um, go along to their facebook page as well facebook.com forward slash emodels ltd lima tango delta um, great community post up pictures of your work for feedback from the community you'll see other people's work on there uh, they also post up uh, offers and competitions sometimes uh, have some good fun on there and they'll also keep you updated on their products coming out new products when things are in stock when they're out of stock and when they're coming back in again um, and last of all uh, check out my website uh, uh, modelmaking.guru that's www.modelmaking.guru uh, I've got a blog on there that I've still not updated yet for a while and I really need to get round to that uh, gallery shots of my pieces uh, and also pieces for sale. I've got works that I've completed that are for sale and I take commissions and stuff um, So check out that uh, But thank you very much for watching. We'll catch up next time whenever that may be hopefully soon uh, And until then Adios amoebas